Thanks for being with me today. My name is Lorenzo and I'll be your host for today. What I'm, we're going to, 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 to see today, basically, is a, a very common scenario where you have uh, different people that uh, in a contact center are going to see information from different queues. This is normal because, for example, it's common that you have uh, like a sales queue and a support queue and you have different supervisors, uh, each of which can only see information from one of the, the, the two queues. So let's get started. Uh, in uh, our example, what we're going to do is we're going to create two users, one call of them called Dallas and one of them called uh, Bob, that are going to access information about uh, this, uh, about uh, QA and QB. So in order to do this, we create first uh, the users. So we create a new one, first Alice. We name, uh, we put Alice. Uh, this, uh, she's not going to be an administrator, so she's only going to see reports and stuff. So the correct class for her is users. Okay, make sure she's enabled and that's it. This is a, a normal user in Qmetrix. Then we create a new one for Bob. So name, so login is Bob. Real name will be Bob. The email could be an email if you want. Enter a password and save it. Now, how do we make sure that Alice is going to, you see, we have two queues here. One is called QA and one is called QB. Now, how do we make sure that Alice can only see information from QA and Bob only information from QB? This is very easy to do because we put a lock on QA. This lock will be a string that we call QA. Okay, this means that only people holding the key QA will be able to access uh, information from this queue. And the same goes for QB, where only people holding called, uh, the key QB will be able to access uh, information about that. So let's go back to our users. So Alice will be holding the physical key called the key A. We put her in this user keys. These keys are totally arbitrary. You can, they can be whatever you want. Uh, as, as much as, uh, as um, they, they make sense to you. Uh, and uh, you can see here in this column uh, information about uh, extra user keys. Now Bob will have key B. There we go. And uh, the same goes for, uh, for uh, here, for the queues, key A and key B. In order to make sure that we have uh, the correct information about the visibility, we create a custom report to just see calls on specific queues. So we add a data block that is uh, called OK07. You could browse them, but I already know it. That basically shows how many calls were taken on which call, on which queue, QA and QB, like we have 50, 47 and 55 at the moment. This information is, is updated in real time. We save it, we call it something to start with 00, so they will be on top and very easy to find. And we make sure this, uh, in this report is public so different users can access it as well. Okay, so we can see we are demo admin that has visibility on both. We log off, we log in as Alice. Okay, run the, we find the report that we just created 00. zero. But uh, as the, we are Alice now, we only have QA, we don't see QB. If we want to, to make sure about this, we could go back to the home page for Alice. And we could look, have a look, for example, at uh, the wall boards. You can see all of the calls being handled at the moment are for QA. There are a number, but all of them for QA. And the same goes for the real time. We go back, we log off, we log in as Bob. Again, when we look at the very same report, I notice that it's the very same report. It's not a similar or clone. It's just uh, it's the very same thing, but for a different person that has different visibility, we only see QBID. And the same goes if we go back to the to the uh, to the home page. We can uh, and have a look at uh, information. Only calls for QB. And the same goes for the real time. 
are available for him. So, as you can see, this was um, very easy. In just a few minutes, we were able to, to, to achieve what we wanted to achieve. There are three things that you may want to consider. The first is that in the case, like in this case, where agents are working on both QA and QB, what happens is that uh, if you are, have no visibility, for example, for QA and an agent is only busy on QB, you're going to see the agent as uh, available. This is, uh, this is uh, by design because this way no information is leaking from, uh, from queues that you are not uh, allowed to see. The second thing is that uh, when we create these users, um, they could be local users, but uh, we have a number of videos out for this. They could also be users managed, for example, uh, over uh, Microsoft Teams or by using Google, uh, a Google account. So you don't, you, the password and all these things would be managed centrally and not necessarily in the same key metrics you are using. The last information is that uh, when you have uh, agents that are actually speaking on the phone, uh, the queue visibility is bypassed because um, if you are taking a, a call on QA uh, and you're handling this call, you need to see it even if you do not have explicit visibility on that queue. So in the, for the case of uh, the agents page, uh, this uh, you're going to see all of the activity that uh, um, belongs to you, let's say, uh, even if uh, you're not, uh, you do not have an explicit permission, but as it's yours, we consider it uh, not an information leakage. So that's all. Thank you for um, having uh, been with me today and uh, see you soon. Bye.